Welcome to the fourth lecture in general topology. The topics that we'll explore in this lecture include interior, closure, exterior, and boundary points. We will also look at the uh, concept of cluster points versus isolated points. Okay, so in the last lecture I made the claims that the interior of a given set A is everything that is inside the boundary of the set A, but not including the boundary itself, and that the closure of a given set A is everything that is on the boundary and interior uh, to the boundary. So I'll start this uh, lecture by uh, proving a lemma that makes these claims a little bit more mathematically precise. So let the set X together with some topology tau be a topological space. And let the set A be a subset of the space X. Then the closure of the set A is the union of the boundary of A with the interior of the set A. The boundary of A is contained in the closure of A. The intersection of the interior of A with the boundary of A is empty. And the interior of the set A is the complement of the boundary of A in the closure of A. So notice that the first two statements essentially state that the closure of a set contains the boundary of the set and statements 3 and 4 essentially state that the uh, interior of a set does not contain the boundary of the set. So proof. First statement. The boundary of A is the closure of A set minus the interior of the set A And so the union of the boundary of A with the interior of the set A is the union of the complement of the interior of A in the closure of A with the interior, uh, a union with the interior of A. So notice that we are adding back those elements which were removed from the closure. And so this union on the right hand side is the closure of the set A. And so the closure of A is the union of the boundary of A with the interior of A. So second statement, the boundary of the set A is a subset of any union which contains it. So in particular, it is uh, a subset of the union of the boundary of A with the interior of the set A, which we have just demonstrated is equal to the closure of the set A. And so the boundary of the set A is a subset of the closure of the set A. So third statement, the intersection of the interior of the set A with the boundary of the set A is the intersection of the interior of A with the complement of the interior of the set A in the comp, uh, rather in the closure of the set A and so these two sets have no elements in common, and so the intersection is empty. They are disjoint. And so once again, the interior of A intersected with the boundary of A is empty. So fourth statement. We have that the boundary of the set A is once again the complement of the interior of the set A in the closure of the set A, and uh, the boundary of A is a subset of the closure of the set A, and so we can take the complement on each side of the equation, the complement of the set in the closure of A, so that the complement of the boundary in the closure of A is the complement of the complement 
of the interior of the set A in the closure of the set A. And so this is the interior of the set A. And so the interior of the set A is the complement of the boundary of the set A in the closure of the set A. So let's uh, once again look at a set whose boundary is something uh, as outlined here. Then we look at the interior of that set A and we consider a point in the interior and we consider an open neighborhood of that point. Now, as the interior of the set A is a subset of the set A, which is a subset of the closure of the set A, notice that it suffices to uh, show that there exists at least one open neighborhood of the point X that is completely contained in the set A in order to demonstrate that a given point is in the interior of the set A. Now, every interior point is also uh, in the closure. However, this is not the complete story since the closure of the set A contains points that are on the boundary. And so if we now consider an open neighborhood about a point on the boundary, we see that for a point on the boundary, there is no open neighborhood uh, of that point that can be completely contained in the uh, set A. And so we now look at what these two types of sets have in common. And uh, we can see that uh, what the two have in common is that each contains a point that is, or points that are in the uh, set A. And so we can now uh, prove this and state it as a theorem. Once again, let the set X together with some topology tau be a topological space. Let the set A be a subset of the space X. And let the point X be a point in the space X. Then a point or that point is in the interior of the set A if and only if there exists at least one open neighborhood of the point X such that that uh, open set U is contained in the set A. And a point is in the closure of the set A if and only if for every open neighborhood U of X that neighborhood intersects the uh, set A, that is the intersection of the uh, set U with A is non-empty. This is a more uh, precise way of saying that uh, the set U contains elements of the set A. So proof. First statement, let X be in the interior of the set A, then the as the interior of A is an open set, we have that the interior of A is an open neighborhood of the point X, where it is always true that the interior of that set is contained in the set A. So conversely, suppose that there exists an open neighborhood U of X such that the set U is contained in the set A. Then U is an open set contained in the set A 
And so the set U is a subset of the interior of the set A. Now since the point X is in the set U and the set U is a subset of the interior of the set A, we have that the point X is in the interior of the set A. Okay, second statement. We will prove the contrapositive. And this is the statement that the point X is not in the closure of the set A if and only if there exists at least one open neighborhood U of X such that the intersection of U with the set A is empty. So suppose that the uh, point X is not in the closure of the set A, then X must be in the complement of the closure of the set A. Now as the closure of the set A is a closed set, its complement is an open set. So notice that the complement of the closure of the set A is an open neighborhood. of the point X, and as the uh, set A is a subset of the closure of the set A, we have that the complement of the closure of A is a subset of the complement of the set A. So if we now take the intersection on both sides with the uh, element A, we have that A intersected with the complement of the closure of A is a subset of the intersection of the complement of A with the set A, which is empty. And so the intersection of A with the complement of the closure of A is a subset of the empty set. Now since the empty set is always a subset of any given set, it is in particular a subset of the intersection of A with the complement of the closure of the set A. And so we now have set inclusion in both directions. And so the intersection of the complement of the closure of A with the set A is empty. And uh, again, the complement of the closure of A is an open neighborhood of the point X. So conversely, suppose that there exists an open neighborhood U of X such that the intersection of U with the set A is empty. Then the complement of this intersection is equal to the complement of the empty set now the complement of an intersection is the union of the complements, so we have the complement of U and a union with the complement of A is the entire set X. And so if we now take the uh, intersection on both sides with the uh, element A, we have that A intersected with the union of the, uh, the complement of U with the complement of A is the set A intersected with the entire set X. The uh, intersection is distributive over a union, and so we have that the intersection of A with the complement of the set U and a union with the uh, intersection of A with the complement of the set A, which is the empty set, is the set A. And so we can simplify this as the intersection of A with the complement of the set U 
is the set A. And as the intersection of these two sets is one of those sets, in particular the set A, we have that the uh, set A is a subset of the complement of the set U. Now, as the set U is open, its complement is closed. So notice that the complement of the set U is a closed set containing the uh, set A. And so the closure of the set A is a subset of the complement of the set U. And so if we now take the complement on both sides, we have that the set U is a subset of the complement of the closure of the set A. So as the element X or the point X is in the set U, and U is a subset of the complement of the closure of A, we have that the point X is in the complement of the closure of A, and therefore, X is not in the closure of the set A. Okay. So now we will uh, look at the equivalent statements uh, about interior points. So the uh, point X is in the interior of the set A, if and only if there exists an open neighborhood U of X such that the set U is completely contained in the set A. So we can now form the contrapositive, which is an equivalent statement, and we have the, the statement that X is not in the interior of the set A, if and only if, for every open neighborhood, U of X, the set U is not contained in the set A. Another way uh, of reading the statement is that there does not exist a uh, open neighborhood of the point that is contained in the set A if and only if the uh, point X is not in the interior of the set A. So now we look at the equivalent statements concerning a uh, closure point or a point in the closure. So a point X is in the closure of the set A if and only if for every open neighborhood U of the point X we have that the intersection of U with the set A is not empty. And we have uh, just proved the uh, contrapositive, which is an equivalent statement, that a point X is not in the closure of the set A, if and only if there exists at least one open neighborhood. U of X such that the intersection of U with the set A is empty. Now a closure point is also called and perhaps more commonly called an adherent point 